Ironic that on the day that Peter Warwick was declared out for the third straight game, the Bengals lost the only guy that has any Warwick missability. Jamal Broussard picked off Cincinnati's practice squad by the Carolina Panthers. The rookie out of San Jose State is explosive, but he's kind of tiny. And speaking of explosive, that would be Chad Johnson. He was the focus of national media today for his care packages of Pepto-Bismol sent to Cleveland's defensive backs. Through the people I sent it to is why it was those four, because they know me personally, you know, maybe not a every day off the field thing, but they know how I am. They know my personality, so I knew they wouldn't take it to a fence, and, and, and that's exactly the way they took it. Now, the rest of the locker room might have taken it a different way because they might not know how I am and, you know, how I do things. I think as players like Chad, they keep the game fun, you know. I mean, we go out there, we're going to compete. It's a challenge every week. When we're on the field, you know, it's all business, but, you know, we like to have fun with it. We got to have fun while we're playing the game. Should be fun on Sunday, and you can bet we'll be in the doghouse. Come join us. Battle of Ohio hasn't been much of a battle lately. The Browns have won four of the last five matchups against the Bengals, and for today's dog fight at the Dog Pound, let's throw it over to Marshall Harris. Marshall? Harvey, the black and orange meet the Browns today, but the color at the forefront, pink. Chad Johnson sent some Pepto-Bismol to the Cleveland DBs earlier in the week, but it's the Bengals who are left with that queasy feeling in the pits of their stomachs after the game. Local 12 photographer Jeff Barnhill was at the dog pound, but the Bengals offense was slow to show up. After a Cincinnati three and out, Browns get it back. Jeff Garcia looks for Andre Davis. Instead, well, he finds Torrey James. Nice grab for the pick, his second of the year. Bengals can't get a first down, but on the punt, Kyle Larson pins the Browns deep. Drops it down at the one, and look at the bounce. Forget about a touchback. Larson's punt goes for 52 yards. But on the very next play, Garcia not exactly feeling the pressure. Rolls right, and then he throws right. Andre Davis beats Delta O'Neal, and he is counting hash marks to the tune of 99 yards. Ties the NFL record for longest pass. It's just the 10th 99-yard pass in league history. First time all year the Browns have scored in the first half. They're up 7-0 after one. After another Bengals three and out, Browns march 57 yards. Garcia caps off the drive on second and six to Quincy Morgan, who puts the bounce on Torrey James and into the end zone. It's 14 to nothing, Browns. Next Browns possession, Kim Herring pops the ball loose from Lee Suggs, and, well, it's a hot potato. Jeff Garcia can't get it. Instead, Kevin Case Varn scoops it up for six. Bengals cut it to a 14-7 deficit. Next Browns drive, Garcia going for the kill, finds a man wide open, but he's wearing the wrong colors. James holds on for his second pick of the game, runs out of bounds at the 26 to set up Palmer and the Bengals over the short field. Third and goal now from the six. Carson hits a wide open Matt Schobel and the Bengals are back in business. This game tied at 14. Bengals already with three forced turnovers. How about four? Garcia loses the snap. Landon Johnson recovers. The Bengals have another short field. Third and goal from the six. Palmer sees Kelly Washington. But Washington can't hold on. One of several Bengals drops on the day. Marvin squad settles for a 32 yard chain Graham field goal and the Bengals are up by three. But Garcia answers with a 78-yard drive on the final play of the half. They go for it on third and goal from the five. Garcia floats it up for Aaron Shea, who gets by Brian Simmons, hauls in the touchdown. Browns minus three on turnovers, but up 21 to 17 at the half. Garcia, 16 of 23, 310 yards, four touchdowns, and two interceptions. Third quarter now, Palmer thinking long ball off the play action has Chad Johnson, but it's underthrown, and apparently 7-11 isn't always open. Anthony Henry takes it away. Palmer, 20 for 36, 148 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. A Brown field goal makes it 24-17. Bengals looking for the tie. Palmer with a quick hitch to Chad. He beats Henry for a quick 18 yards. The drive stalls. No chance for a tie, but Shane Graham is in there for three. However, he misses the 44-yard field goal wide left. Bengals still down seven. Same score in the fourth until Garcia finds Lee Suggs streaking down the sidelines. Suggs just 19 yards rushing, but 100 yards receiving. 59 of them right here. Browns go up 31-17 with just over 10 minutes to play in the celebration. Well, it's on. Final score, 34-17. CJ held to three catches for 37 yards, and the Bengals are 1-4 for the second straight year. So the Bengals win the turnover battle 4-1. But that doesn't really matter when you're out gaining total yards, 449 to 189. We go inside the locker room in search for a, of a spark for the Bengals offense. Not disappointed in our effort. 
disappointed in our execution of things. Our effort is there. Our effort hasn't changed. But I'm, ex I'm disappointed in our execution of, of covering people, our execution of tackling, our execution of executing things on offense, protecting, running the football, throwing the football, catching the football on offense. The only reason we lost this game is because of me. Period. We lost this game because of me. All those th third down catches which should have been drive drives that are supposed to keep on going. This one is on my shoulders. I wish we knew the reason that, that we're not being explosive so we could change it and, and we could um, be explosive. But, um, you know, everybody keeps saying execution, 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 and everybody, then everybody says that's not a good enough answer. But if you don't execute, you're not going to be explosive. If you're not executing, you're not going to move the chains. If you're not executing, you're not going to win. If we start looking at the schedule as a whole, we're going to put ourselves, we're going to get in a lot more trouble than we are right now. We've got to concentrate on the next game, which is Denver right now, um, and then go from there. Time to hand out our 12 sports game ball, and that goes to Torrey James today. Five tackles, two interceptions. He held his own, even though the rest of the secondary struggled. Harvey, it's time to hear what the fans have to say. Marshall, thank you very much. Time for you at home to pick up the phone and give us your opinion. Which is most frustrating about the Bengals right now? The poor pass defense, the poorest run defense, uh, the lack of a passing attack, or the weak running game? Pick your poison call 345-1212. I want your vote, and I'll have your results a little later in the show. Now, before you start jumping off the bandwagon or turning your back on these Bengals, let's toss it over to the voice of the Bengals, Brad Johansson, for some insight. It's Who Asked You? Oh, Brad. Harvey, thanks very much. Uh, Richard Skinner, the only man in here, only the one able to come back after this huge loss. Nobody could drag in on a day like this. Goodness gracious. Okay, I'll ask you, what's most disappointing to you at this point? Well, you know, you'd say run defense, except it's not disappointing because I didn't think much of it to begin with before the season started. You go back all the way to, to training camp. This was a focal point that we talked about. So I'm not disappointed in it. I just didn't think it was good from the get-go. Go get back go. before training camp. Right, exactly. I think it's the run offense. It, it, it almost seems like when it gets going, they abandon it, and at times it obviously doesn't get going. And obviously, Rudy today, what, 16 rushes for 57 yards, that's not running it enough, and it's not running it very effectively. Yeah, 58 yards on the ground, and you, you look at the inequity uh, of what Cleveland was able to pick up and what Cincinnati was able to pick up, and you go into this season saying this is an explosive offense. I don't care what the defense does. This team's going to score points. Yeah. They can't score points. No, and, and, you know, it's strange. If you look at the yards today, what, 186 yards, 189 yards, whatever it was, it was under 200. Right. That, that's just not acceptable by NFL standards. And it doesn't seem like there's any rhythm now. And the confidence is shot. You know, they miss Peter Work, and I think they, they really haven't found another weapon. How do you account for Chad Johnson dropping footballs? How do you account for the fact that the tight end isn't a viable part of this offense? Suddenly you're missing a weapon in work. The tight end can't get open. Your best receiver's dropping the ball, and you can't run. I don't care who you have at quarterback, who you have, you're not going to score many points. Here's what concerns me. Early penalties, mm -hmm. lining up offsides, not being able to get the snap count, dropping passes. This all smells of discipline stuff that you just don't expect from a Marvin Lewis coach team. I mean, this was stuff that looked like it was cleaned up last year, and, and we thought that this was behind us. I mean, honestly, you could have put... Dick LeBeau on that sideline today, or Bruce Cosett on that sideline today, and expected the performance you got today. That, that's exactly what I thought when I watched the game today. I thought, I'm watching Dick LeBeau's teams. I'm watching Bruce. I'm watching Dave Shula's teams. I'm not supposed to be watching this from Marvin Lewis's teams. Where do you think this comes from in a team that's 1-3, and three, desperate to get back in the race, two and a half games behind the Steelers before the day starts, must-win situation, and you see this performance? I, I don't know, and I wish I had an answer for it. You know I always have an answer for everything. On this regard, <laughs> Brad, I don't. I, that, that's one of those great mysteries that, you know, can I point and say that the players are disappointed Kitten is not the quarterback? No, I, I can't say that with, with great confidence. Is it the injuries? You know, is it not having work? Is it having a disheveled offensive line? Is it the fact that you had the same front four coming back that wasn't any good to begin with, and now they start to cheat? You know, maybe those two penalties are simply two players who know Oh, I can't beat the guy across from me. i got to cheat a little bit. You know, it, it, it's it was at the like start that. of the ball I game. Know that. You can't say that. Okay, we go through the quarterback situation all of the time, and we've said, no, 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 you can't get away from Carson Palmer. Is that one and four a reason to try and jumpstart this team, a reason to put John Kitten in just to put him in to try and jumpstart it? I know that always seems to be the place to jumpstart, and I think that would smack of panic. But, you know, maybe that is something that you have to do to keep your fan base interested. In and I know that sounds like a dumb answer, but you do have to keep your fan base interested a little bit. 
You know, you look today, how many balls do you think were dropped? Eight, ten balls maybe? Uh, a minimum of six and probably you can go beyond oh, that. Okay, so suddenly the kids 20 or you know, 19 of 26, 20 of 26 as opposed to 13 of 26. Those are and good quarterbacks. And stats. add a touchdown to the stats as well. You know, that, that's the part is I can't point to the quarterback position and say this is why they're struggling. I can point to the defense and say personnel's bad. I can point to injuries a little bit on offense. But I, it, this is puzzling. i got to go real quickly. Mm -hmm. Can they beat Denver on Monday night? Uh, can they? Yes. Will they? No. Just because Denver's really playing good football right now. They run the ball. They throw the ball. Defensively today, they gave up three points. And, and who's the, how do you think the Bengals are going to fix all of this in the span of seven days, eight days? It's not going to happen. Didn't think they could fix it against Kansas City last year. You're right. The head coach got a jump start on second guessing by taking over some play calling from coordinator Leslie Frazier. Everybody wants to question stuff. Okay, I took the question of doubt out of them for them yesterday. Okay, it's not the calls. It's not the paper. It's how you do it. You know what I'm saying? And so I took that out of everybody's mind yesterday. Everybody. Everybody. I took it out of their mind. You know? That, that it's not what you call. When you call it, it's how you go about and execute it.